Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to learn about integrating media into your website. We have different types of media which we're going to look at. This is topic number five. In particular, this topic is going to cover the different image file types that we have, how to insert images into your website, how to use the SFG tag, how to use audio and video file types in your website, how to use the object tag, the video and audio tags, and also about accessibility and media types. So those are some of the things that we're going to be looking at. By the end of this topic, you should be able to select appropriate file formats uh, using images in web pages, insert images into HTML documents, draw graphic using SFG, define CSS rules, that use images in the design of web pages and also discuss the audio and video file formats that can be used. You should also be able to describe the different approaches for integrating video and audio into web pages and explain strategies for addressing accessibility issues associated with using images, video and audio in web pages. So let's begin by looking at the different image image file types. Generally, we have two types of image uh, files. We have a vector image and a raster image. A vector image is based on mathematical formulas that define lines, shapes, and curves. On the other hand, uh, with vector uh, with graphic, with graphic or raster, raster graphics, this one consists of grid of tiny dots. These tiny dots are called pixels, pixels. So that's the main difference between vector images and raster images. Vector images made up of mathematical formulas. So they are images that are drawn using lines and any other shapes and curves that you know. On the other hand, raster images or graphics, they are made up of tiny dots. Those tiny dots each contain a particular color, and each one of them is called a pixel. Now, with vector images, they are resolution independent. Resolution independent means if you resize that image, then the image quality is not affected. It remains the same. On the other hand, with raster, with raster, uh, 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 images, which are also called bitmap images, uh, really they are resolution dependent. Uh, if you take a photo, for example, using a low resolution camera, if you zoom into that photo, you find that the image quality degrades. Uh, so resizing an image really uh, will degrade the quality of that particular image. Why? Because the image is made up of tiny dots tiny dots so if you expand these dots so much then the quality of the image it becomes blurry it becomes blurry so you're gonna see that in a short while but generally those are the two types of images uh, vector images and bitmap images also known as raster raster images now in the web uh, in the web you can use one of these image file formats the first one is called GIF the next one is called JPEG. I know you've heard of this. I also know that you've heard of PNG. So today, you also see uh, the full meaning of each one of them. For example, JPEG is Joint Photographic Expert Group. So all these image types are raster, raster images or bitmapped images, meaning that they are formed. They are formed. What are bitmapped images? They are formed by tiny squares, tiny squares. Each square contains a single color. So for example, you can see here, you can see here, if we zoom so much into this image, just at this particular area, at this particular area, you can see that we can be able to see the tiny squares. And for example, that one is color that, that one is color that, that one is color that. You can see this one is that shade of uh, blue, for example. You can see we have another color here. And you can see we have another color here. So that is what we call a bitmapped image. It's made up of tiny squares, each of which 
contains a single a single color okay uh, image uh, file formats use compression uh, to reduce to reduce the size of the image it is important that before you use any image in your website you compress it why do we compress images we compress images to improve usability we compress images to improve usability usability in this case is the download speed if you use heavy images then it's gonna take a while especially for people who are on slow internet connection for the image to download and someone might walk away from your website before the entire image is actually downloaded eh? I hope you've ever experienced a situation whereby you've gone to a website and a particular image is downloading bit by bit and therefore it's relieve, uh, revealing a part of the image as it continues to download the other parts so that's why we should compress our images we have two types of compression methods the first one is called lossless compression lossless compression the next one is called lossy compression. Main difference between these two is that in lossless compression, the exact pixels can be recreated. On the other hand, as the name suggests, in lossy compression, uh, some information is lost. So you cannot be able to go back to the original, but you can uh, uh, go back to an estimate, to an estimate of the original. So those are the two types of compression lossless and lossy compression now with bitmap images the color depth refers to the number of possible colors an image can feature so the term here that you need to understand is color depth now we have 8 bit images we have 24 bit images so for example for an 8 bit image a pixel can be one of 256 possible colors that is 2 raised to power 8 you're gonna get 256 so an 8-bit image is gonna have uh, any particular square can be one of the 256 colors yes oh yes uh-huh Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so maybe then you can uh, you can leave the class and join again. Then if you type on the on the chat that we are not seeing the notes on your screen, I can't be able to read the chat because obviously the window that I'm seeing is that window that I'm presenting. So always make sure you join with your mic so that you can unmute your mic and talk. Uh -huh. Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, so please leave the class and join again to see whether that issue will be sorted. Thank you very much for, for that. Okay. I think we can move on okay so I hope you get the concept of uh, the color depth color depth that we have 8-bit images we have 24-bit images and that really determines the number of possible colors as a particular pixels or a particular square can have eh? okay so we have uh, the three image file formats that we looked at GIF, JPEG, and PNG. So we just want to talk about each one of them in particular and be able also to compare uh, each one of them and see the use case scenario for each of this particular image file format. Now, for example, GIFs are 8-bit images, 8-bit images. They support lossless compression. So you cannot use lossy compression to reduce the size of a GIF. Now, these particular images are suited for images that feature a limited number of colors. For example, in your website, images that uh, are, are used to represent 
the logo or buttons or particular diagrams like maps and so on. So images that have a limited number of colors normally are saved using this particular uh, uh, image file format. Now the other important thing you need to understand is that with a GIF it can be transparent. When you talk about transparent it means that we, we, we can make the background transparent. We can make the background transparent. So as you're going to see for example with JPEG, JPEGs cannot be transparent. They cannot be transparent. So it's not possible for a JPEG to be transparent because a JPEG is actually an image like the one you take with your photo. Normally, a pixel can be one of 60, over 16 million uh, colors. So a JPEG really is a 24-bit image, uh, unlike the GIF, which was 8-bit image so that's why it's able to have all these scalars 2 raised to power 24 so this one supports low C compression eh? low C compression now this one is appropriate for images that feature a wide range of colors one of the most common one are photographs that you take using your smartphone camera or using for example a DSLR camera so those photographs normally will be will have the extension of jpeg uh, so that is what we call a jpeg and lastly we look at pngs 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 now pngs can be they can be 8 bit 16 bit or 24 bit so they support lossless compression they are recommended by w3c that you be using this on your on your web applications why is that so 8-bit PNG offers some advantages over GIF images, for example. Uh, now, uh, like GIFs, these ones can also be transparent. You'll have to wait. I think she's so close. I think she's so close. Okay, ju just give me a minute, please. Okay, so we can move on. Uh, ha. So uh, the advantages again of PNG over GIF. So PNGs can also be transparent. They can also be transparent, but uh, you can vary. You can vary the level of transparency. You can vary the level of transparency of PNG. Well, you can't be able to do that on GIF images. Another advantage is that for an 8-bit PNG, it will be uh, small in terms of the file size to the equivalent GIF. So those are the two advantages of PNG over GIF. Again, again, there's another thing that you're supposed to know here, that for a 24-bit PNG, it will usually be larger in file size than the equivalent JPEG. It will be larger in file size than the equivalent JPEG. Eh? So JPEG is still a better choice for photographic images. JPEG is still a better choice for photographic images. Uh, okay. So preparing images for the web, as I mentioned earlier, you can't just take uh, images with your smartphone, then use them on your website. Why? Because normally they are of high resolution. When they are of high re resolution, it also means that the file size is too big for the web. So you need to use some graphics editing application to perform some operations on the image, such as cropping. Cropping is removing the unwanted parts. 
resizing you can resize the image uh, from a particular size to a smaller size and you can also convert uh, using these editing applications you can convert between the different file types we've looked at GIF we've looked at JPEG we've looked at PNG and you've seen uh, you've actually seen how uh, each one of them uh, 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 is used and the advantage of each one of them over the other so you can be able to convert uh, an image from one file type to another now commonly used image editing application includes Photoshop I'm sure most of you have heard of this we have another one called fireworks we have GIMP we also have another one that comes with Microsoft I can't remember the name so well um, I'm forgetting the name but uh, I know you, you you know other tools so these are some of the tools that you can use to crop images resize images or even change the file uh, format the image file format type okay so how do we insert how do we insert images how do we insert images into our web uh, uh, into our web pages we use the image element IMG 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 is a standalone element it uses the source attribute to specify the URL of the image the location of the image so like that so source then is equals to iris.jpg like that so jpg is the extension for jpeg images so the name you start by the name of the image then a dot then the extension of the image like that we can also use the alt attribute alt attribute is for alternative text so this one here for alternative text uh, now you can see that this is the value we're giving it how does it work it is displayed if the image file is corrupted or cannot be found so just in case this image here is not found or is corrupted then this value will be displayed it also makes the page more accessible as screen readers will read out the alternative text it's gonna read this out because for people who cannot be able to see the image so the screen reader is gonna read this so that's how you make your images more accessible we also have another uh, important attribute called the style attribute that is used to specify the width and the height of an image so you can see here we have style is equals to then you have width we give it 400 pixels semicolon height we give it 523 pixels semicolon mm. so that is how we use the style attribute in order to use uh, what we call inline CSS of course this is inline CSS so this is just CSS in order to format the height and the width of the image alternatively you can also use the width and the height attributes to specify the size of the image as is shown in this particular example here so you can see for example width height width height you can see there okay so here we are meeting another element the figure element and the fig caption element now HTML5 defines these elements for marking up images uh, for marking up images so instead of putting the image inside a paragraph because it's a standalone element instead of putting it inside a paragraph then you put it inside this block level element the figure element then the fig caption is used to uh, caption that particular image that is to give some more information about that particular image uh, okay so you can also use images as links how to do that you simply enclose the image inside the anchor element you see you have the opening anchor element then the closing anchor element then the image is in between that so when you do that then this image is going to be clickable and when a person clicks on that image it's going to take them to this site wikipedia.org uh, so uh, to do that to make an image a hyperlink you nest the image inside an anchor 
inside an anchor element. So that's how we do that. So don't forget that. Uh, how do you use images? How do you use images inside your web pages? So the images insert, is inserted into HTML should be part of the document content. This is very important. This is very important. So you should never use images for design purposes. Don't use uh, images for design purposes. Uh, saying that they should be part of the document content means that it should be relevant. It should be relevant to the content of that particular web page. Eh? Eh? So you should not just use images for 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 Outlook. No, 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 no. Because images are heavy. They are heavy and they might affect the usability of your website. So if you include images, uh, not as part of content, but as part of design, then you might make your website slow to download and users might not use it. So we can include images in the CSS if they are needed for presentation reasons. So in case we need uh, uh, to use images uh, for presentation, for the outlook of the site, then we need to use CSS to do that. So we are going to see how to use images as the background, for example, using CSS in a short while. Otherwise, it is it is recommended that all the time images should be used to add extra information to the content of your web page rather than the outlook. So I hope that is important. So for example, use a, a photograph, an illustration, or a logo. So it should be part of the content and not the outlook. So I hope that is very clear to each and every one of you. So uh, I have already said this, download speed. Download speed is one of the most important one of the most important factors in website usability. So images are a big factor in download speed. Uh, so does the image add value? You need to ask yourself. If not, then consider removing that particular image in order to be able to increase the download speed. Uh, so I hope that is clear. So let's see how do we format images using CSS. How do we format images using CSS? We have uh, we have the IMG selector. The IMG selector is used to select the IMG elements in CSS. Now, once you use this, then you can be able to use several properties such as border, float, padding, margin right, uh, in order to be able to format that particular image. Now, by default, text will align, will align with the bottom of an image or at the bottom of the image that means that if you have if you put an image then you put a paragraph below the image then that particular text will go below that image will go below that image otherwise you can use what you call the float property float property this one here float for example left so float property will move this particular image to the left for example here and when you do that then the text will wrap around the floated image so the text will wrap on the right because you have floated this particular image on the left so anytime you want text to uh, wrap around uh, the image you need to use the float property so don't forget that okay so you can use CSS as background images. Uh, you can use images as background of your HTML document. How to do that? How to do that? For example, you can use the body selector. Body selector. Then you use this property, background image, then URL. Then you give the position of the image. Where is the uh, where is the image located? And then the name and the extension. So this particular image is going to be used as the background of that particular white part of your document, of your web page. Then we have another important property called background repeat. Now, if the image is small, if the image is small and you want it to be used until it fills up 
your entire web page, then you can use the repeat value. So repeat value means it's going to be repeated. So for example, um, for example, this is our this is our web page here. Then our our image that we've used it can only occupy that space. So if you want it to fill up your entire web page, you need to use the background repeat, and it's gonna be repeated. It's gonna be repeated. It's gonna be repeated like that, like that, until it fills up, until it fills up your entire, your entire web page. So that is what background repeat does. Uh, some other important. Uh, some other important properties, for example, uh, we have a property that can uh, that can determine whether the image background should scroll with the content. If the content is bigger than a single page, when you scroll the content, do you want the image background to move with it or do you want it to remain fixed? Eh? So I'm giving you that as a reading assignment. Please find out, please find out the property that is used to make the background to either stick or scroll with the content. The other one is the property to position, to position uh, the background image. So for example, you just want this, is, yes, yes, what are you saying? Oh, research on the property, research on the property that should make a background to either stick or scroll with the content of the web page. Research on the CSS property that will either make the background image to stick when you're scrolling the web page or to move with the content as you're scrolling the web page. Another one you should research on is uh, the position of the image, background image. So for example, here we said that this image, the size is small, you can see. And that's why it has been repeated four times. Eh? But sometimes you can use the value here, no repeat. That is, you just want it to be used once, no repeat. But you want to position it here, the background image, you want to position it here rather than here. By default, it will be positioned here. But what if you want to position it here? So we have another property that can be used to position uh, the background image at a particular place. So also research and read on that. OK, we have um, what you call image replacement techniques. Image replacement techniques. Now, um, the other day, uh, I mentioned that uh, the other day. I mentioned that uh, you can, uh, you, you are not supposed to use when you were looking at fonts and font faces and so on. I said you are not supposed to use fancy fonts on your site because if you use fancy fonts that are not common, then users, the users of your site, are not going to have that font on their computer and that means that the website your website will be displayed using the default font so I said that now one trick one trick that is used in order for you to use special fonts for example is by using image replacement techniques so this is how it goes this is how it goes you've created an image you've created an image, flowerheading.png. This image really has the wordings, garden flowers, uh, which is written in some fancy fonts that is not popular. Uh, so you save that as an image. Maybe you've designed it through Photoshop or something. You save it as an image. Then, for example, here we are on heading one. We give it an ID of flower heading. Then on CSS, we use the hashtag to select the ID flower heading. Then we say that we want it to have a background image 
of that particular card design that you have designed mm? garden flowers mm? then we say background repeat no repeat so we want heading one this one this particular car box here heading one is gonna have a background image which image is that this one do we want it to repeat no no repeat then what is the height we want it to be 100 pixels then we have a very important this is a very important uh, uh, a very important attribute or property that is now used to hide this particular text so this property is called text indent text indent so text indent then negative 9999 pixels so that simply means push this text garden flowers push it away from the browser so people are not gonna see it because we've pushed it away for example if you do text indent 10 pixels it's gonna push it in like six spaces in eh? so when you do negative 9999 it pushes away from the visible area so people are not gonna see they're not gonna see garden flowers the text but they instead they're going to see the background image which has the same wordings uh, so that is one of the image replacement techniques image replacement techniques and that particular technique is called the Randall fuck technique or method mm, Randall fuck Randall fuck method so this Randall fuck method uses the text indent property to remove the HTML text from view it is important that you still have the text because the screen readers can still the screen readers can still read the contents of heading one uh, so yes you are replacing it with an image but you still have to have the text so that it can be read out to people who cannot see okay so anyone with a question so far question or comment Anyone with a question or comment? Okay, so let's move on. So SFG, SVG, uh, not F, SVG. Okay, so SVG is a scalable vector graphics. It stands for scalable vector graphics. Scalable vector graphics. It's a tag that is used to define the container for SFG graphics the width the height specify the size of the SFG container so you can see here we have SFG and close SFG so opening tag closing tag then we have an attribute width and an attribute height so inside the container we can draw boxes rectangles circles text path and graphic images by using the svg tag so scalable vector graphics uh, scalable vector graphics in this particular example we are drawing a circle a circle so let's have a look at that so here again we have to begin by the opening svg tag and the closing now this width and the height specifies this this area here you can see this one, this area uh, okay then inside it we are using the circle so circle uh, element then CX and CY so CX and CY is used to specify 
the x and y coordinates of the circle center. So 50-50 means we want it to be at the very center. The circle center should be at the very center of this particular box. The very center. I'm not sure whether I'm going to get it. Uh, so something like that. So that is what CX and CY is doing. Then R, R is the radius. So radius, radius is R. Radius. So that is what we call radius. Okay. Radius. Then stroke is the border. The border color. You can see here it's blue. 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 Then stroke width is the width of this border. So if you put two going to be like that. If you put one, it's going to be thinner, thinner than that. Then fill is used to, to fill the color, the color inside the circle. So fill pink. So that is how, for example, you can draw a circle using a scalable vector graphic. Okay. We can also be able to draw a rectangle using the rect the rect element, the rect element used to define a rectangle shape. The width and the height specifies the size of the shape. So you can see rect. Then we have the width and the height. Uh, so that is the length and the width of the knee. stroke. For example, blue. Uh, then we have X and Y. X and Y specify the coordinates of the shape. The coordinates of the shape. While RX and RY define the radius of the round corners of the rectangle. So if you want to have these rounded corners, rounded corners, then you have to define RX and RY. Uh, Otherwise, here, where the where the rectangle is placed uh, inside the vector, the SVG, you use X and Y. X and Y. So that is what is used to position that particular rectangle somewhere. Now, you can also use the text, the text element. Like here, it's here. Text. Text. So text, then fill white, font size 45, font family Vedana, X75, Y140. So then you do the content, SVG, then close text. So that is what, that is what puts this particular text inside this rectangle. So you use the text element in that manner uh, to put text inside a particular shape. Okay. Okay, so now we look at uh, audio and video. How do you use audio and video? So in comparison to HTML documents, video and audio files are very large. So bandwidth limitations, that is the internet speeds, have limited the use of audio and video over the years. But right now, we're having better speeds because of fiber, having fiber in almost every county, in almost every country. Uh, so that's why this is no longer uh, much of a concern right now. So video is now an important part of the web. Video audio files are compressed to be delivered over the web. So just like images, you can't use audio and videos without compressing them. The software that is used to compress video and audio is called a codec. A codec used to compress and decompress audio or video streams. Uh, common video codecs include H.264, Theora, and VP8. On the other hand, commonly used audio codecs, audio codecs include MP3, I'm sure you've heard of this, 
Vobis and right now we also have AAC so I'm not gonna go deep into this but just know that they are containers that are used to hold either video or audio content so audio formats we have a number some common audio formats I want you to read about the rest but of course mp3 is the universal format for music media universal format for music media it is supported by almost all the browsers so that's why we need to know about these formats uh, so mp3 is used for that did you know that also mp4 mp4 is also used for audio i know most of you maybe have uh, are used to having mp4 with just video but you can also use mp4 for audio especially apple devices uh, internet explorer and safari web browsers the they support uh, uh, audio that have been saved with .mp4 or .aac. We also have .wav uh, that is commonly used for ringtones and similar sounds, supported by Firefox, Chrome, and Opera. So major modern browsers will support audio. Uh, audio and video elements so we're going to learn two new elements so with html5 and modern browsers we do not need third-party plugins such as flash in order to play multimedia files on web pages so uh, i know most of you are young but a few years ago we had to install a certain software called the flash player we used to install flash player uh, in our computers to enable browsers to be able to play video. So if you want to watch a video on YouTube, you have to install Flash Player. But that is no longer the case. Why? Because HTML5 and updated browsers are, are, are supporting these two tags or elements, the audio and video elements, that can be used to embed content or video or audio content into the web page and be played without the need of a third-party plugin. So I hope that is clear. So to embed audio content, you use the audio, the audio, open audio and close audio tag. Inside it, you use the source, the source element. The source element will have the SRC to show the location, the location of that particular file and the type attribute to uh, say the type of the file and the extension so for example audio stroke mp3 audio stroke ogg eh? like that so um, what else am i supposed to say here this is important that if more than one audio source is used for example here this is the same the same file but saved with different extensions so we have tomorrow.ogg and tomorrow.mp3 so if more than one audio source is used then the browser will choose the most suitable source for that particular browser so the for the same file with different extensions then the browser will choose either mp3 or ogg depending on how it has been built uh, so for example if you're having an audio file with .mp3 and .mp4 for apple devices and safari browser they'll play the mp4 for google chrome they'll play, play the mp3 so that is what that means okay the audio element has a number of attributes the audio element has a number of attributes one of them is the control another one is autoplay another one is loop loop okay so autoplay is used to specify that the audio should start playing immediately the audio should start playing immediately that is what is called autoplay um, so when you're facebooking or when you're TikToking, uh, you scroll up there's a video and it starts playing immediately so that is what autoplay means uh, that is what autoplay means otherwise if uh, for example you go to certain websites and you're told you can there's a video there but it's not playing you have to press play in order for it to start playing so that means that they have not used the autoplay attributes 
So autoplay is used to automatically play. Immediately the page loads. It begins to play. Okay, then we have the controls. We have the controls. They are used to specify the user interface controls for the audio player. So control means um, you are giving, you, you can see we've used it here. You are giving your you are giving your uh, website users the ability to play, the ability to post, the ability to forward, the ability to rewind. So they're going to have those video controls. So they can be able to do that. They can be able to do all those things. So that is what we call controls. Then you have loop. So loop means exactly that. Specify that the audio will repeatedly play. The audio will repeatedly play. So that is what we call loop. If you use loop like we've used here, then once one of this audio is played, it's going to be played continuously. It gets to the end, it begins from the beginning again. Uh, we also have preload. I'm giving you that as a reading assignment. Please go and read more about preload. Okay. So what if the browser does not support the audio elements? And this is this is why we say that having multiple browsers is a challenge to web developers. Because sometimes you get that some browsers are not regularly updated. So standards are released, like HTML5, that come up with new elements, like the audio element, but some browsers don't support it. So if the browser does not understand what audio is about, such as Internet Explorer 8, it did not support the audio element and below, those versions that are below IE8, we can, number one, use an anchor element, anchor, sorry, anchor element to link the media file or use the object tag to embed a media player in the web page. Okay. What is happening? Ca can you be able to hear me? Hello, can you be able to hear me? Oh, where did you lose me? Where did you lose me at? Okay, okay. Someone was calling me, so I think it interrupted my internet connection. Apologies about that. Okay. So, we can use the anchor element or the object element if the browser does not support the audio tag. Eh? So this is how it's done. The object element, object, then use the type attribute data to give the location of that particular file. Then you can use the width and the height. Uh, then you can include some content. This particular content can be read out by, can be read out by uh, screen readers. Uh, so that's how we use the object element. You can read more about that when you get time okay uh, container formats so video files consist of multiple data types normally you have a, a video you have an audio you have text you have images so a video file really normally is called a container. It's called a container because it contains different stuff. You have animation, you have a video, you have audio, you have text, captions, you have images, cover art, etc. So a video file is simply a container. Why? Because it brings together different video and audio streams. So it also specifies how they are arranged and work together. So uh, for example, the Flash video format is a container for H.264 video uh, and either MP3 or ACC, ACC, A -A 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 -C audio. Uh, so uh, that is what the Flash video format supports. Uh, some video container formats for the web. So one of them is MPEG, MPEG-4. MPEG-4 is what you call .mp4. 
like most YouTube videos are dot mp4 uh, they also uh, uh, the, the container for that also is h.264 mm. then we have this one Theora and OGG we have webm and vp8 so I'm not gonna talk about all that but what is important here is to know the browsers that support each one of them uh, so you should always research about browsers okay then you have the video element. HTML5 provides video elements to easily embed media into a web page. So we looked at the audio. So this is the video. So the video, this is the video element. We'll have a source uh, to give the location of that particular video file, then width and height. And if you want to give the controls, this is how you do it inside the video element. Controls is equals to controls. Otherwise, you you just don't have it and users cannot be able to pause your video or reduce the volume or forward so they won't have those uh, particular controls please remember that the video element is uh, is not a standalone but a normal element with an opening tag and a closing tag uh, this is only supported by the modern browsers most browsers support the video element now, inside the video element, you can have several file types using the source attribute. Using the source attribute. So .ogv and .mp4. So each source element specifies a different file format. The browser will you will choose the format that they will play. Yeah? So the video element has similar attributes as the audio element so icon a source icon autoplay controls loop preload height with poster so we've not talked about poster specify a url for a poster to display before the video is played uh, width specify the width of the video player height specify the height of the video player accessibility and media very important accessibility and media so many disabled users cannot use audio and video so you must provide alternatives for the important content uh, so if there is no alt attribute for the audio and video elements then ideally we should provide transcripts we should be able to provide transcripts uh, so transcripts, for example, you can see here inside the video, inside the video element, we've included a paragraph saying your browser does not support the video element. Download the uh, Leopard video or view the transcript of the Leopard video. So we're just giving some extra information that will be read out to people who cannot see so that they can be able to know that mobile devices and media so here the issue of file size and download speed is even more important for people who use mobile devices to access your website why because number one slow network speeds as we know uh, a few years ago we had 2g and they, they were very slow 4g 5g right now they are good enough but earlier mobile devices were connected through 1g or 2g and they were very slow so slow network speed was one of the challenges of using mobile devices to access websites that have video uh, audio or images then the other thing you need to consider is that these people pay they pay they have to buy data bundles in order to be able to uh, access your resource and therefore if your resource is very heavy then it's going to consume their data bundles and they may not be able to uh, use your website before they get that SMS notification that their data bundles is over yeah, so uh, those are the two main challenges for people that are using mobile devices uh, to access websites in relation to media so that is why images should be small they should be small many mobile devices have screens that are less than 200 pixels in width 
especially the feature fonts. So if you have very big images, they're not going to fit on those screens. So those are the three issues uh, that you should consider uh, about mobile device users in relation to media. Sourcing media, how do you find how do you how do you find images, videos, audio files that you that you want to use on your website? Like right now I've given you a project that at the end of the semester you have to present a website. Pick a topic, find content and build that particular website. Now if you have to do that, you have to source some of the images, video, and audio files from the internet. From the internet. Now, most of this content are copyrighted. Most of this content that you just go and download, they are copyrighted, and you can be sued. You can be sued uh, to either pay for damages or pull down that particular content from your website. Copyrighted means that you cannot use that particular content without permission. Yeah. Now, there are also many files that you can use. For example, we have public domain images, video and audio. That is, uh, sites that provide uh, uh, these things for free. For example, you, you're going to find that we have, um, on your website, you're going to be needing some icons. And one of the major we have we have several sites that can give you some icons for free uh, like flat icon there's one called flat icon or something so if you google just uh, icons uh, download icons for free you're going to get some some sites so you should always uh, be uh, aware about copyrighted material so that you don't use it without permission on your website okay so uh, media that is licensed media that is licensed for copying and adaptation need that you include attribution just saying that this is where it comes from and it was created by this particular person we also have what we call the wiki wikimedia commons you can read about that uh, when you have some time so this is how you do attribution for example you've downloaded this video that you've used on your website leopard.ogv so you've downloaded it from here from this site from this particular location so how do you attribute it you can create a paragraph or say a span you give it class attribution then you say that leopard.agv you put it you put a hyperlink so that if a person clicks on this they're gonna go to that particular uh, site where that video is. Uh, so this is how you, you do it. You can also, for example, include the license type of that particular uh, video uh, on that particular paragraph. So that's how you can be able to attribute. Remember, attribution is just like referencing uh, in academic research, that whenever you use content that is not yours, you have to refer to the source. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this particular chapter. You can do some further reading from these particular resources. Otherwise, does anyone have a question? Anyone with a question? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is it about today. I'm not going to come.